Negative experiences in any hero's story affect their growth as a character, especially during high traumatic events in their lives. But even though these experiences happen to the hero, we get to watch them try and overcome them, possibly becoming the strongest hero among all the isekai out there. Hi, my name is Burai, and today I'll be talking about how PTSD molded the best isekai anime of all time, Moshiko Tensei, A Jobless Reincarnation. So, for a disclaimer in case anyone needs to know, I will be talking about PTSD, or Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. I am no expert in this field, but I will be presenting facts based on my research. If this topic is too sensitive for you, you have been warned. If you agree to the terms and conditions, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If I left out any important information, let me know in the comments below to better inform me and anyone else watching this video. So with that out of the way, Jobless Reincarnation is the embodiment of how to properly develop a zero to hero protagonist from one of the most overused anime genres I've ever seen, the world of Isekai. That's right, Sal fanboys and ReZero hype beasts. The best Isekai series with the most powerful protagonist is Rudius Rirath from Mushiko Tensei. For those of you who haven't watched Mushiko Tensei, the story revolves around Hikikomori, or someone who has severe withdrawal syndrome because of all the constant bullying and ridicule he had to put up with throughout his entire life. It comes to a point where he gets kicked out of his own house. He tries to save someone and gets run over by the great overlord Truckkun. He then restarts his life in a magical fantasy world as a baby, resetting his entire life while bringing back all his memories and experiences from his past life with him. Although the plot seems like your typical isekai story with its fair share of intense action scenes and a collection of various female characters as is harem, there is one unique plotline that makes this series a step above everyone else. The first half of season 1 gives us an idea of how traumatized Rudius was in his previous life. Rudius couldn't accept the love of his new family. He already had a sour relationship with his previous parents that left him with no paternal love or nourishment. He couldn't even leave the house because all he could think about was what everyone was thinking of him. Did they hate him? Were they ridiculing him behind his back? All because of how he was bullied back in his old school. But to try and get a better understanding of what Rudius is going through, we need to understand what he's feeling. We have to look at what PTSD is. Now, like I said at the beginning of my disclaimer, PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. According to the American Psychiatric Association, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder is a psychiatric disorder that may occur in individuals who have experienced or witnessed a traumatic event, such as a natural disaster, a serious accident, a terrorist act, war or combat, or those who have been threatened with death, sexual violence, or serious injury. PTSD can affect a wide array of people. From veterans straight out of World War II, to probably some random guy you bumped into down the street. This disorder can be found anywhere. Some of the various symptoms include flashbacks, bad dreams, and negative thoughts called re-experiencing syndromes, something we see happen to Rudeus countless times. Whenever he's put into a situation that might trigger his PTSD, he gets extremely nervous, his body will start to shake on its own, and he gets flashbacks of his traumatic moments in life. Another symptom of PTSD that is clearly visible in the series is avoidance. The term feels self-explanatory, but to paint a better picture, let's take for example a bad car accident. A person who usually drives may avoid driving or riding in a car after getting into a bad car accident. Or let's say you were heavily bullied in school, like Korean or Japanese level of bullying. You're nothing but a prostitute. At a certain point, you're gonna want to avoid going to school and seclude yourself in your room because of how traumatizing the outside world really is. One more symptom that we see from Rudeus is towards his cognition or mood. This symptom mainly edges towards feelings of detachment from family and friends. If you remember in one of the previous episodes, he shoved his best friend away from his life when he was at the worst point in his life. He's always getting negative thoughts when he tries to think back to his life in the previous world. And he always tends to blame, well, himself whenever something or anything doesn't go according to plan. Now although this series tackles all the symptoms that our main protagonist has, the big difference between this and other isekai series is how this affects character development. 
A lot of people tend to use this term when an MC tries to get better throughout the entirety of his story. Which isn't necessarily true in a sense. See, character development is how well written a character is throughout his journey in the fictional world. You know something? I really hate people. Whether it is good or bad development solely depends on how they progress throughout various situations that they go through. In particular, Rudeus is given a debuff at the beginning of the series, his depression and PTSD. Throughout the story, we see Rudeus grow from an infant to a child all the way to a teenager, while retaining his memories and whatever skills he may have had from the other world. We see him deal with these real life issues like how any other normal person would react. We see how he is able to adapt instead of just growing through his debuffs. This means that, unlike other protagonists who have just a desire to become a better person, and somehow just transform into one after a story arc or two, Rudeus has to deal with all of this suppression and PTSD across all the story arcs. His main goal is already clear in the beginning scene. He wants to start over. He doesn't want to be Hokage. Become Hokage. He doesn't want to find the One Piece. Real. He doesn't want to beat the system. All he wants to do is start his life over and not make the same mistakes he previously did. <laughs> He wants to be with his family. He wants to take care of his sisters. He wants to make his sensei happy. And probably still wants to stare at the maid. At the end of the day, he wants to do over and become a better version of himself who can handle all this traumatic experiences he faced. So, to close out my TED talk, I think it's the right call that the main character wants to be someone who can handle all this traumatic experiences he faced. He didn't choose to be depressed. He didn't want to go through all that bullying. He didn't want to push away everyone in his life. But he has a choice to make things better. And we always want to root for him in the series. Whether it's him becoming the greatest and strongest adventurer, we are still excited to see him tackle all of that. And this is how PTSD molded the best isekai series known to man. And that's the end of the video. If you're a first time watcher, go ahead and check out all the other videos that I have on the channel. If you're an old subscriber, well, congratulations. I made a new video and it only took me like maybe more than half a year. I do plan on making more content this year, so hopefully you stick around. I will be trying to get a more consistent schedule, but we'll have to see what we do from here. And as always, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.